Morning everyone, welcome to podcast number seven. This should be the first one you're listening to at the start of a new half term, so welcome back. This half term, we are going to be looking at speaking in the real world. So last half term, we looked at it in terms of a school context, and now we're starting to think about how we can not only develop these skills in school, but actually think about how we can develop them moving forward and how they're going to be useful to us in the real world. So we're actually really lucky today because um, obviously this Oracy podcast is working its magic already um, because actually I'm not going to be doing the interviewing today, I'm going to be handing it over to some students. So um, I'm going to hand over to them now, they're going to be asking all the questions um, and introduce our um, guest speaker for today and then I will speak to you at the very end. Hello, my name is Madalena from 8B. Oh, I'm Aunt Mama. And this morning we will be interviewing Mr. Callagher. Um, why do you think developing oracy skills is important? Well, Madalena, um, so learning a skill is primarily about retention of knowledge. You know, there's not the sort of the opportunity maybe to speak as much as you possibly can. So obviously oracy and our desire to get students to speak well and not just write well is so that they can express themselves and apply that knowledge. So it's not just about understanding, it's the ability to explain, the ability to evaluate. So often in novels, something will be written down, you can retain that knowledge, but you also need to be able to say what was inferred in order to be able to apply it. So it's these sorts of aspects. This is why I think oracy is important. Um, so do you have an example of when either in your professional life or your personal life where you have you know, needed any good oracy skills. Absolutely. So I, I think I'm probably tired from telling you how many amount of times I used to work, obviously, as a, a lawyer before I became a, a, a teacher, primarily my uh, my um, qualifications. But um, so I can remember a time of the need for an application for a super injunction. So I did a lot of work in media law. So a super injunction is where a Sunday newspaper was going to publish this very salacious story about a famous celebrity and they were about to publish it on a Sunday, so we found out on a Saturday that they were going to do this, so we need to make an application to a judge on a Saturday. So obviously, the last thing a judge wants to be disturbed is on their weekend, but we needed to do it in order to prevent them from publishing the next day. So you need to convince the judge that what they're about to publish is lies, it's defamatory, it's nothing more than hearsay, i.e. he should, she said, as it were. Um, when arguing effectively, what tips can you give students on constructing their arguments and how to engage in debate or be persuasive? Uh, excellent question. So uh, there's three things. Uh, clearly, you need to set out your argument before um, before your audience. So you need to walk your audience through the argument that you're going to make. You need to speak clearly, be logical and work through it chronologically. So work through the events as they happened chronologically. As you make a point and logically explain it, move on from it. So it's walking your reader, if it's written, but more importantly, obviously, in terms of oracy, walking them through your actual argument. And then most importantly, know your audience. I know we've ex we looked into this this morning in terms of the case that we're going to be discussing. So, for instance, if you're a defence barrister, you must always remember to carry an imaginary violin because the people you're appealing to are your jewellery. So in a sense, you need to present your client in the best light, in the best light possible. Obviously, you don't make anything up. Obviously, you don't lie, but you need to present them in the best light possible. We can think about someone like O.J. Simpson, obviously, before your time in that in that context. OK, um, so can you tell us about the mock trial project with Year 8? What skills are we de developing and um, what have you noticed so far? Great. Well, um, I know obviously you, you're well aware of this, but just to let the other students know. So um, we're looking at the um, this novel that I think every student pretty much has read in Year 7, Robert Swindle's Stone Cold. So we're looking to, um, to put um, shelter uh, on trial for murder, as it were. So we've got three uh, prosecution barristers, three defence barristers, we have two judges who are going to lead the jury of 12 members uh, from again from year eight. Um, so that's what this moot in a sense is about. The skills I think that you're learning um, is um, so that you can visualise. So what I'm really, really keen towards you doing is to be able to visualise in your future that ye 
any of you could be a judge, could be a barrister, could be a clerk, a solicitor. So it's that element of visualization. But I suppose at this stage, it's also getting you to be able to not just retain knowledge, to be able to apply it, as I said. So able to walk the jury, as it were, in this case, through the facts so that you can get your client off or you can get your client convicted for murder in the instance of this. Um, if you could give the students one piece of advice or top tip, what would it be? Um, so following on from what I had early said as well, know your audience. I think that's really, really important. The other thing, I suppose that's the crucial one, but it's also about being able to speak clearly, try to be logical, don't cover off issues that you've already looked into. And the most important thing I can say to you is be yourself. Great, thank you. Um, what feedback have you got from the students so far that have been involved in the mock trial? Well, I think we're quite fortunate, Miss, that we're in a position where we actually have two of them in front of us. So I hopefully, um, I, I know this is rather winging it, but I don't know what their own impressions are. Though I know we've been quite limited. I mean, mm -hmm. we had half an hour, I think, during a library lesson today, and it was two weeks before that. I don't know. Maddie. What do you guys think? What has your experience been of? Because obviously it's quite different to just being in a normal English lesson. Have you found it beneficial? What's been the difficulties of it? Um, I think I sometimes prefer it than being in the English lesson because you can like share your ideas more, and also it's a topic we already learnt about, so we have more to share in our opinions on it. So you've got the knowledge there already, so now it's an opportunity to talk about it. Was there anything as part of it that you found difficult at first? Um, I was, I don't really, I'm not very good at public speaking, so it was hard at first. To, in terms of feeling confident to yeah. speak in front of everybody, and what about for yourself? Um, I mean, I guess it was fun, shouting objection every time. Yeah. So everyone got quite into being in role yeah, in the moment. Yeah, characters and everything was quite fun. So I guess this is obviously something that Sir has set up as a kind of extra additional thing to be involved in. So what would you say to students who are given opportunities to do things that would improve their talking skills? Um, what would you kind of suggest to students if they're given these opportunities to get involved? Um, I think they should go for it because at first it like you can be a bit scared or like you might not want to do it because you don't think it will be fun but then when you have a group of people doing it it can help you a lot. Great and what's the what's the end point of this? Um, what are we hoping for the end point? Well I think the main end point obviously you can come out of school like at here if having finished your GCSEs and maybe have several A's but you may not be able to speak in public so obviously in the real world it's all about job interviews you know it's all about your interface with you and other people so it's crucial that you be able to get on with people but also that you be able to think on your feet that's a real skill I, I can't tell you how many students I meet who can retain an incredible amount of knowledge incredibly well in exams and yet they struggle to speak you know and that's especially it's not just as a career as a barrister or a lawyer it's a career in any facet of the world in which we live today. It's all about the ability to communicate. I guess the other thing I was thinking, as well as all the talking, actually, there would be quite a lot of listening involved because for you to be able to mm -hmm. come back to what someone else has said, you've got to be able to listen and summarise or retain um, that information as well. So actually kind of almost teaching those listening skills so that you're Definitely. able to respond. Okay, thank you everyone. So that is the end of this week's podcast. Um, if you haven't listened to all the ones from last half term, I would definitely go back and have a listen. And next week we will be um, talking to City Year um, about building confidence. So that links really nicely to something that you might find challenging at this stage in terms of speaking in front of people. And they're going to give us some top tips on what they think about that. Thank you everybody.